Welcome back. In the last video, I mentioned trunks, and I kind of just mentioned it and moved on quickly. But what I want to do is, in this video, I actually want to talk about what a trunk is and how it works on this Unify switch. So, what is a trunk? A trunk is a switch port that allows tagged VLAN traffic to pass through it. And most switches do this on a standard called 802.1Q. That's the encapsulation type. So if you have two switches from different manufacturers, whether it be Ubiquiti to Netgear, Ubiquiti to D-Link, Ubiquiti to Brocade, Ubiquiti to Juniper, or Ubiquiti to Cisco, as long as they're all talking 802.1Q, your trunk connection should come up and you should be allowed to pass VLANs between the trunks. So where can we use trunks? There are a lot more places where you use trunks than what we're going to talk about today, but the main two that we're going to cover are creating trunks between switches and trunks to access points. And the reason that you trunk to access points is so that different SSIDs can be associated to different VLANs. Okay, so let's hop into Unify and see how it handles passing VLANs to these ports. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring our switch back up and we're going to go over to the configuration and we're going to look at the networks and VLANs and right now you can see we only have the one LAN and that is native. So right now on the 192.168.3.1 slash 24 network all of those packets have no VLAN tags. It's, it is um, the native VLAN and is uh, VLAN 1 essentially, but it is untagged traffic. So if we want to create another network, we come in here and we go to networks and we can create a VLAN only or we can do a a corporate and a corporate our USG will actually handle all the routing and DHCP and then if we do a VLAN only we're gonna tag that VLAN but some other device is taking care of the DHCP and the routing so we'll go ahead and do this just as an example so it's called plant it's a uh, corporate this is the subnet so the USG is going to handle all of the routing for that and we'll come over here and just because we have a wired network doesn't mean necessarily that it's a wireless network but we are going to attribute that VLAN to a wireless network to our devices and see what's provisioning. The Unify switch really saves us a lot of work and it really right now in the controller the way things are exposed it's kind of uh, an all or none or a manual override type mechanism for the VLANs and we'll look at that real quick but I will tell you that my my best guess my best guess is that they are using 802.1Q because I have uplinked a Unify switch to a Cisco, swi Cisco switch and on the other side, which is the Cisco switch, I did specify 802.1Q encapsulation on the port and everything worked properly. So we'll pull our switch back up and when we go to the configuration you can now see that uh, we have two networks that we're passing through, the LAN and the plant. But that's kind of, that's kind of it. Um, we can delete this config. Now, it won't delete the network from Unify, but it will delete it from the switch. And if we go over to the ports, 
So here's our here's our access point. If we edit this, you can see that we can make you know 22 the native VLAN for that port, or the only VLAN that we're we're passing through, or we can allow all. So unless you want to mess with the JSON file, there's not much more in the config at this point. I do believe that there's been some talk about expanding this functionality. So for right now, unless you you know you delete it or you create a special network, this is really kind of the the top of what the software is going to do. And so for anything more advanced, I use an edge switch. Um, is when the Unify does catch up with the edge, edge switch, I will push more Unify for small office deployments. That way we can look at everything under one, one pane of glass. But that, that's it for the switch part. So we'll look at the access point. And we can go over to the configuration and look at the WLANs. And as you can see here, we've got the plant WLAN. And it knows that it's 22. So anytime anybody connects to this SSID, everything will be sent with a VLAN tag of 22. And then the switch and the USG know exactly how to handle that. So it's, it's pretty simple. If I wanted to disable that, I would uncheck the enabled. Or I could even, at the access point level, change the VLAN to something else. And then the VLAN... The, uh, switch would or the access point would send tags with whatever number I use now if the switch and the USG don't recognize the tags they're likely just gonna drop the traffic so keep that in mind that's really it if anybody out there in radio land has anything to add anything else they'd like to see you know uh, put it in the comments below if you like the video please give a thumbs up please subscribe please comment and share and we'll see you at the next video